All right, we're back. Deck five. Let's see what we get this time. We've had quite a bit of Unfathomable, which has been nice. Um, even some Sanctum. That was our first Sanctum deck last, last time, but none of, none of our uh, none of our openings have really wowed me in particular. Um, so you know, if you uh, first you want to succeed, just try try again. All right, this time we are Dr. A.K. Alder. Starting with logos here, the Ruins of Arcanus. Put four amber on it, and then archive something. That's good all on its own, really. After a player plays their sixth current turn, if it's in play. Okay. Alright. You'd have, you'd have to have a big archive. Fila. You know about her, she's a reprint. Uh, no blue archaeologist. Archive a card in your discard pile. This card is always good. If you can, if you can do that, it's great. Making this, this is working well with the ruins of Arcanus already. On the drone. Australia's seaboard. Three, deal two damage. If it destroys a creature, raise a type. That seems okay. Village Warden, I've heard about this guy. Play Reap, if the tide is high, your opponent raises the tide, otherwise you raise the tide. Okay, so it's just a great way just to get the tide back, I guess. Play Raise the Tide. Two of them. Final Analysis. Destroy each creature, each player draws a card. Okay, final analysis of the ruins of Arcanus is interesting. A phase shift. Excellent. Science. Remainder of turn after you play another action card, gain one amber. Okay. Talmage Steelheart. Give a plus one counter for each card you have played this turn. One, two, three. One more. Two of them. Um, what do we think? Nice board wipe. You can draw a card. So, if, like for a big creature deck, it could be cool. Um, the ruins make that even more interesting. I'm not sure what I think about it really draw happy. We have to Starlands, so we have Dr. Driscoll, it's a reprint. Agent Septia. It's one damage it's tight as high stun that creature. Okay, that has a good chance of going off. The cheetah making guys elusive. Don't care. Amberback, nice tide raising. Out of the Archons, reprint. Officer Blaster, we know about that. Destroyed, moves to a neighbor. Operative Espion, after a player raises the tide, they may use a creature. Okay, so that's a nice house cheat. Um, that's a decent house cheat card. Arctic Trista, all tides high, the neighbors end the fight ready. Quinkin is a reprint. Techno Babble, stun a creature. 
double techno battle. In your Discord, use a friendly non starlight creature and return two friendly creatures in each go catch in their owner's hand. In your Discord. Okay, that's it for that. Um, what do you think about this Starlight's house? Um, it's got some stun, which is cool. Um, even the agent is decent. Um, Officer Driscoll can kind of gain us to Amber a lot. Um, and these cards smell different. <laughs> I think Operative Espion is going to give us a lot of options whenever we raise the tide with any of our Logos cards. We have a lot of them that do that. We have Bilge Warden. Is it just Bilge Warden? <laughs> and Bilge Warden and the Seaboard. So I guess that could be interesting, maybe? Alright. Going to Untamed. Chenille. Okay, this is the Chenille Bombix falafel thing. Action and return it. Bombix. There's the Bombix. Return a Fafalde. Fall day. I don't know. Yeah, I'm kind of like with that. With others, I'm not too, not too impressed by those cards. Kangafan, I love Kangafan. Ritual of Balance, nice little Amber Control card. Then the herd shuffle the least four powerful creatures in the owner's decks. Hmm. That is more than likely going to be us. We don't have a lot of high creature power here. All tied up. Tied is high. Gain one. Otherwise, raise it. A lot of raise tight. Infighting. Yep. It's kind of like the board clear by the neighbors. So we have to be really careful how we set up our board. Key frog. Nice. Persistent something to exhaust. The fittest to make guys more powerful and the youngest bear. Um. Well, I'm feeling how many creatures are there? One, two, three. And then realistically you get like four. Five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18 creatures, not very many creatures, um, making the, uh, making the final analysis, um, kind of a difficult thing, you know, unless you... You, know, you play the ruins, you know, final analysis, you draw a bunch of cards, and then you hopefully have drawn six logos cards to play. Well, let's see. Ruins could step off. Ruins can be card one, right? Um, you got like one, two, and then if you could play four more cards after that, you'd be all set. Phase shift makes that nice. Or, sorry. Phase shift into something else. That's four cards right there. Uh -huh. You know, it uh, it'll just be interesting. It's our first logos deck. I gotta say, oh, logos is doing Star Alliance. I think complements this deck pretty well, but it's really gonna really gonna need to see how they interact and then the untamed. Uh, has some disruptive cards, has some bursty uh, 
firsty cards here with the um, all tied up. Got the infighting, so we're gonna have to be like I said, really careful how we set things up. But anyway, um, so that's it, guys. Uh, we'll get it all loaded up and see how she plays, and we'll catch you later. Thanks for watching. All right, everyone, we're back. Um, Dr. A.K. Adler. Um, so you can tell things are a little bit different. Um, I got the window in front of me, so you can all see my pretty face. Um, here it's actually Friday. Here where I am. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit uh, before I get started playing just about the, the uh, Dark Tidings cards themselves. I don't know. Uh, it's... Um, it's currently early May. We happen to have decks where I'm where I'm at, and after opening some, I've just really liked what I've seen on <clears throat> the cardstock and the printing themselves. It just seems like it's just a little bit sharper, um, and they just the cards feel better to me. Um, let me know what you think. I did hold. You know, one of these cards up against a, a Mass Mutation, against a Worlds Collide uh, card that was reprinted. And you can definitely tell that the font is a little bit different, that things are just a little bit sharper. Um, and then if you look on the packages themselves underneath the barcodes, um, you can actually... Uh, the Dark Tidings say Made in Germany on them. And then I picked up a Worlds Collide box that I had here, and it says Made in China. So, um, you know, who knows why FFG did that, but uh, I think the German cards are, are better. So, it's just my opinion. Um, but anyway, we're going to get Dr. Adler. Dr. Adler, right? Dr. Adler Alder in a game. Um... So we'll just queue up a casual, and then while we're waiting, I'm going to talk about this deck a little bit. I have played it here and there, and I've got some opinions. Um, it's it's not the best uh, Dark Tidings deck, I don't think. It's got some stuff that's really fun. You know, the Ruins of Arcanus with Final Analysis can be fun. But you really have to be careful about when you do that. If your opponent's drawing more cards than you, that could be bad. Um, overall, the creature power is not very high. All right, so we got a pretty run-of-the-mill uh, Worlds Collide deck here. Um, we'll say GLHF and get started. Um, so far in the couple games I've played... The uh, it's it's really interesting going up against non um, non dark tidings. So we do have a phase shift here, so we can play three cards. Um, it might be a mistake, but I'm gonna keep it. And he starts off with a shadow council. That's just. All kinds of bad news. Um, all right, so we'll play Logos. We'll put in this Seaborg. We're going to phase shift and get this Fafaldi out of our hand. It's going to be destroyed, but go ahead and pass. And we're back into 2 2 2. Awesome! It's not great. Um, so yeah, it's it's a very low creature power deck. It uh, it it pulls the tide. It uses the tide very well. Um, ah, that hurts. That hurts a lot. Um, we're going to stay in Logos. We're going to have to do something here. I'm going to play Feel of the Researcher. 
We'll play any reactions. Uh, we'll draw first, it's fine. What did we get? We got the final analysis. Um, we'll go ahead and f we're not going to do that. Can wipe this board and draw three and it might be the time to do that we'll just we'll fight here we'll final analysis draw three cards and pass hopefully that was better for us than it was for them but that's just how that card works um with the ruins of arcanus it works you know you 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 can fire it that way but it's um Again, if, if you have to kind of manage the board in a way that you draw more cards than they do, and it's very difficult to do that with the creatures that you have. All right, so they're taking an untamed turn here. They play some cards to no effect. That's really good. So we're going to go untamed as well. We'll play a ritual. Um, pull the tide our way. Play the youngest bear and do the fittest and pass. Okay, now a very good Star Alliance turn coming up. Um, hopefully they play Untamed again. They don't. They play Shadows. Um, I trust no one. Oof. That hawk hurts. Um, yeah, so we're definitely playing from behind here. Um, Okay, this is interesting. So we can play a we can play Rocketeer Trista. Well, Titus, I her uh, other guys coming to play ready, so we can we're gonna play this Sepida here. And who's a problem? Bramblelinks. Uh, we'll go ahead and reap. We're gonna deal damage to the Bramblelinks and stun it. We've got a Quinkin and a Driscoll. And I'm guessing that this Agent Sepida is a big target for them. So we're going to put that on her. Can't stop them from foraging. So they're going to do that. Another kind of good Star Alliance turn coming up. There in this, I'm guessing. I'll play a poltergeist to give you some more chains. Plays a harbinger. Okay, we need to keep um, we need to keep this harbinger locked down. So we're gonna get to test Star Alliance's ability to do that. Is stun a creature. Any of his names that share house with it. Okay. So we're going to stun that one. Play Light of the Archons onto. Sure, let's we'll make him huge. Capture some Amber onto Quinkin. And play another elusive creature. Tide's still high, we're going to reap. Deal one damage to the Avenda. Keep reaping. Do we have any scaling amber control? No, not really. So this is kind of our chance to bust up into some amber here. Alright. I have forgotten totally about infighting right now. So right now that card is going to be a discard. I'm going to be staying in Star Alliance until they give me a reason not to be in Star Alliance. Agent Sepida here is just going to keep stunning guys until he can't do it anymore. That's nice. 
That's nice. We do not want him being able to wipe the board here. Under any circumstances. So we capture two amber. We're gonna forge a key. Then the herd is not a good idea. Persistence hunting is not a good idea. Again, uh, give me a reason not to be in Star Alliance right now. <laughs> um, we'll reap and stun that. They put damage on the youngest bear, which just means that Driscoll is going to action for more. And we're going to pass. <laughs> And I'm, if he doesn't do it, I'm staying in Star Alliance. I'm just doing it again. Okay. Perilous Wild. Interesting. Now the untamed turn doesn't look so bad, does it? And this is just a race right now. And it's interesting because I can reap and then reap here and stun some more guys. I'm going to be shuffling in the Harbinger, the Ghost Hawk, and the Bear. So the only one that really causes me a problem is the Avenda because it's got the Soul Keeper on it. So that means we play Untamed. We reap with the Bear. That means we use Sepita. We choose a creature to stun. It's going to be Avinda. We're going to play Thin the Herd and go. One. Oh, and they're all plus. Oh, they're all three power. That's hilarious. <laughs> I got to choose four. Yeah, there you go. What did I do? Um, I'm not sure what the problem is here, but it's not... It's not giving me a Don Q. Getting a dozen button. I mean, even if I, I can't choose five, this isn't a yeah busted. Um. So yeah, this is broken, obviously. And I can't do anything else. Oh, you know what? There we go. I had to choose the bear, but it shows multiple targets at aren't allowed. And we got the chenille. Um, persistence hunting for untamed, I suppose. And then we'll play a key frog and say happy forging. <laughs> so they forge, they're on their last key. We're set up to forge our last key here. He plays a special delivery, hawks it, goes up to four amber, moves stun, and we win. 
Um, that was a good game. Um, so, like, some of the hallmarks here that uh, I have found in particular is Sepida is a boss. Um, he can really... You just saw it, right? I mean, he locked down a Harbinger of Doom for basically the entire game. In addition to Techno Babel and other cards, like, we talk, you know, Unfathomable is kind of like the exhaust stun lockdown house right now, but this does not have Unfathomable, and I pretty much locked down the board the whole game, and that's how we got a win there. Agent Sepida, Techno Babel, um, Persistence Hunting, these are these are some really detrimental cards to, to an opponent. Um, the final analysis, I just felt I had to. I can't let him have that Shadow Council out and just steal my Amber the entire game. We have to reap to win, and we need creatures to do that. And if we're getting outboarded and they're just stealing it, we're never going to catch up. So that's kind of my explanation there. Um, but yeah, um, that was Dr. Elder. Um, I think it'd be a pretty decent sealed deck, but it can definitely fall flat on its face. So not one that I uh, think is competitive. Anyway, guys, um, take it easy and stay tuned for some more decks. See you later.